We've been having a lot of fun in the Arboretum here looking at different trees and other plants, uh, ferns for example, but we haven't really talked about the invertebrate diversity, the animal diversity that you can find out here in the Arboretum. One of the places you can look for different invertebrates from a variety of different uh, groups is uh, in the decaying material of logs uh, and tree trunks. So here's one that is uh, quite moist inside, and it's obviously quite far along in its decay. And inside, uh, you can find various things living in here. For example, this is an isopod crustacean. It's one of the very few crustaceans that live pretty much entirely terrestrially. Um, you would normally know crustaceans as aquatic. This particular type of, of crustacean uh, has freshwater and marine relatives, but it lives on land. And it does this by staying in very moist areas. It has special modifications of the gills that allow it to extract uh, oxygen from the moisture in, a, in an environment like this. Uh, there's a larger one here. In fact, I would say this one is a potentially different species. So there are actually several species of these commonly known as sow bugs, and the one that you might be more familiar with is the uh, pill bug. Its name is Armadillidium. And what it does is roll up in a tight ball, uh, much like an armadillo, hence the name, the genus name Armad Armadillidium. Uh, also in here I've seen uh, various grubs and certainly track marks of things that have been eating this tree probably for quite some time. Uh, centipedes, in particular the rock centipede, which is that reddish-brown one that you see quite commonly. Uh, if you were to come back a little bit uh, earlier in the season, say in the summer or fall when it's not quite so cold and the ground isn't quite so cold and were to th lift these things off you might find all kinds of gastropods, slugs and snails, earthworms um, as well, so some annelids, all kinds of invertebrate diversity living just out of sight. Now there's another interesting thing going on over here. It's another uh, log, tree trunk, that's dead and decaying. In this case it's actually quite dry. Um, and what's interesting about it is this black coloration on it here, it looks like this thing has been burned. In fact, that's a fungus growing on uh, the outer part of this tree. You can certainly see lots of examples where insect grubs and other things have bored into this tree, um, but it's obviously been dead for quite a while. So while you're out here, you should be looking for not only the uh, diversity in the flora, the trees and other plants, but also take a look at the fauna, the animal diversity that exists out here. Sometimes you have to work a little bit harder to find it. So we're at the entrance of the Arboretum near the boardwalk, and uh, we've just been looking around at different parts of the forest here. And I'm a zoologist. I study primarily animals. Dr. Newmaster is a botanist and studies plants. And it's really interesting to come out here together with our different types of expertise and our different interests uh, in terms of the diversity that we tend to notice and, and know something about. Biology deals with very complex phenomena, very complex systems, a very high level of diversity. Nobody is an expert in everything. And that makes it uh, very important that you see it as a collaborative process where people with different expertise can work together. So we're just going to take a look at some uh, different environments here, particularly some decaying logs that provide habitat for interesting plants and interesting animals, and just uh, talk about that a little bit within the context of what a botanist sees and what a zoologist sees when you're in the same environment. So we're just going to take a look at this uh, old log here and just see what kind of stuff we might find underneath it. We'll just roll it over and uh, right away we can see a few things. There's a, a rock centipede that is just taken off. They don't care to be out in the open so it will probably disappear fairly quickly. Here's an earthworm which looks like it's probably in the genus uh, Lumbricus, which is introduced in this area. And you're most familiar probably with uh, Lumbricus terrestris, which is the really big um, worm that you use for fish bait and things like that. And here's a different earthworm species that uh, I would need to key out to identify it. But there are probably a dozen species of earthworms, maybe more, in this area. Um, and, in fact, there is a key available called the Earthworms of Ontario um, that we have in the library. So there's a couple of earthworms. Those are annelids. So that's another phylum represented. Myriapods are arthropods, so there's another one. There's also a millipede, 
also a myriapod. Uh, here's a snail. This is Sepia nemoralis, which is an introduced species in this area as well. You'll probably see this all over the place when you're uh, in the arboretum. They are found on, on trees, on the leaves, on the ground, underneath decaying material, and so on. Uh, they have a wide level of uh, variation in their shell form, uh, specifically with, with regard to color. And in fact, there's some interesting genetics uh, work being done on the on the uh, basis of that, and also the evolution of different color morphs uh, under different types of predation. So there's lots of interesting things in here. It so happens that we've seen a few things that are introduced species, but there are also a variety of different things that um, that, you, that can be found in this area that are or not introduced. So as you're poking around in the arboretum, be sure to flip over the odd log and see what you find, because you will notice lots of uh, invertebrate diversity. So in old forest, one of the characteristics is called coarse woody debris. And coarse woody debris are all the logs that lay around on the forest floor. One of the things forest managers wrestle with is how much coarse woody debris do you need to leave? We've already seen from from Dr. Gregory that coarse woody debris provides habitat for all types of animals. It provides habitat also for plants. And one of the plants that we can find out here in the arboretum are mosses or bryophytes. There's really mosses and hepatics. They live on the logs rather than on the ground because here in the deciduous forest they get buried in leaves. So they tend to live on these upper structures. But more than that, there's mosses that live particularly on lo logs, and they're called epizilic bryophytes. They only grow on wood. Actually, some of these species are so specific with their habitat that they'll only grow on one type of log, of a particular size and a particular age of forest. And as you go through forest of different ages, you can look at the hepatics, the liverworts, and start to gauge how old that forest might be. If we look here, we can see there's a species Fissidens growing all over on the log. Now this liverwort is probably only about three millimeters long and it makes mats. On the underside of the liverwort there are pouches on the leaves and in those pouches, which has a little lid, there's water. It can conserve water, it's good for the, land, for the plant, but it's also habitat for other organisms like rotifers. And you'll see when you're looking through the microscope, the lid will open up and the rotifer will come out and you can see all the cilia moving. It almost looks like a spinning wheel. That rotifer is in the habitat of that liverwort that lives on a log in an old growth forest of a particular age. This is the importance of microhabitats and diversity of life. Now I confess that when I look at an environment like this, uh, as a zoologist I tend to be kind of focused on movement to try and find diversity and, and often there's a lot more animal diversity than we expect but one thing I'm not uh, qualified to assess I suppose but I'm interested in is the number of plant species that you might find in a confined little area like this. Could, is this all one thing or maybe two or three species or are we looking at more that only well, an expert can tell? The first thing you need to do is find the expert. You need to find the guy that has one of these just tucked away in his jacket, <laughs> a little hand lens. So I'm a bryologist, a particular kind of botanist, and I specialize in bryophytes, these liverworts and, and hepatics, particularly in old growth forest. If we look at this log, there are probably about 25 different species here. My goodness. And you can see all the different colors and shapes. You can see the CTA, the stalks of the capsule. Some here are copper and some are different colors. You can see the capsules over here which are green and they have a particular shape. These are all different species of bryophytes that live here on this log in this particular habitat at a particular age. And it's that combination of environmental factors and age that allow these, these species to establish here on this microhabitat, this log.